Okay, it's it's ten past, and uh, we're probably going to be sparsely attended given the weather. So let's. Uh... <clears throat> so here we are, first winter storm. You guys already got your midterms back. So what do we have, like 20 people out of 100? <laughs> um, we're about to take off in a very different direction, talking about set theory and propositional logic. Set theory, how many of you guys had an introduction to sets in like elementary school or you know, middle school, whatever it's called these days? So. A few people. I, so I, I grew up with what they called the new math, which was a lot of set theory in, you know, third and fourth grade or something like that. I'm not quite sure why it was called the new math, but you know. <clears throat> um, I find this stuff really helps organize one's thinking about a variety of things that are that are very important for counting and for probability. And it's very easy to get set theoretic notions inside out. And so we're going to work through a bunch of this stuff, set it up with a little bit of formalism and a little bit of notation, but trying to illustrate things with examples so that it all makes sense. To the extent that this is a review, you can uh, you know, nod off or encourage me to go faster or whatever you think makes sense. I don't mean to torture you with stuff that, you've already, that you already have seen and understand well. So um, we'll just see how it goes. <clears throat> We're going to talk about sets and relationships between sets. The fundamental thing we start with is sort of a universe of objects. Uh, and we're going to call that S. And uh, Venn diagrams familiar for, to everybody? Yeah, OK, you did Venn diagrams. So Venn diagrams are part of the new math, right? This is part of, part of the same thing. OK, so uh, the, the set of things that, that, were, that are under consideration, the things under discussion, the universal set is going to be called S. And when we start talking about probability and random events, S is going to be called the outcome space. It's the set of all things that could happen as the result of a particular experiment. Um, the experiment might be tossing a coin once. What could happen? Well, the coin could land heads, the coin could land tails, and then if you really want to be pointy-headed, the coin could land on its edge or the coin might not land at all. Right? Um, those are pretty much all the possibilities. <clears throat> um, OK, so S is the set of things we're, we're talking about. And the kind of the most fundamental notion we have is uh, to represent that something is an element of this set. So a set is a collection of things without regard for their order. Um, so this, this symbol, this funny E, is pronounced is an element of or is a member of or is in. So this is pronounced X is in A. X is a member of the set A. X is an element of A. <clears throat> Um, so here is the idea that we have some set A. It's a subset of the universal set S. Sub, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a subset of all the things that are under consideration. And here's the point X. X is an element of A. X is an A. Um, what does it mean for two sets to be equal? It means that they have the same members. So again, order doesn't matter. So if two sets have the same members, they're the same set. And in some philosophic you know, sense, there is only one set with a given collection of members. Every other set that has the collection, same collection of members isn't really a different set. It's that same set. <clears throat> so in particular, a set, we can, we can write a set by listing its elements. So here's a particular set. Its elements are little a, little b, and little c. <clears throat> that is one and the same set as the set that we make by listing the elements in this order because it contains exactly the same things. So one, one way of writing a set is to put its elements in curly braces. Another way, and just listing its elements, another way of specifying a set is to say, I'm considering all things that satisfy a particular property. So all things such that some property is true. So I might list, I might have a set that is the even numbers less than or equal to 10. And I could either write that as you know, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, or I could write that as x such that x is greater than 0, x is even, and x is less than 10. Right? It's the same set. It's just a different way of describing it. In one case, you list the elements. In the other case, you list some properties that the elements satisfy. <clears throat> okay. 
Um, the complement of a set is the collection of things that aren't in the set. So if this is the set A, the, the yellow region, then the blue region outside is A complement. It's the stuff that isn't in A. So it's all the elements of the universal set under consideration that are not elements of this particular set we're talking about. <clears throat> There is a special symbol for the set that doesn't have any elements at all. It's the empty set. Either write it with just two curly braces and nothing in between them, or this, uh, this thing that's like a phi. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the empty set is the complement of the universal set. What, what are all those things that are not in S? Well, there isn't anything that isn't in S, because that's everything that's under consideration. So what isn't in S is empty. There, there's, it has no elements. <clears throat> Um, so we'd write that S complement is the empty set. The complement of the empty set is S. Right? Everything that, that, that you know, what, what's the complement of nothing? Everything. <clears throat> OK. Uh, if a very important relationship between two sets is the subset relationship. A is a subset of B if every element of A is also an element of B. And you can write that two ways. This is writing it A as a subset of B. And this is writing it the other way around. B is a superset of A, or B contains A. So this, both of these mean that every element of A is an element of B, is a containment relationship. Containment is different from the little e, is an element of. Right? Is an element of, for A to be an element of B, B would have to be a collection of things that includes A as one of its members. This relationship with the subset means that everything that is an element of A is also an element of B. It doesn't mean that A itself is an element of B. <clears throat> OK. Um, the way a Venn diagram for set containment subset relation looks is, is like this. A is a subset of B because every element of A is also an element of B. The empty set is a subset of every set. Okay. Because all of its elements are in every other set. It doesn't have any elements. It's not very hard for its elements to be in every other set. Right. <clears throat> okay. The subset relationship is transitive. So everybody remember what transitive means? A relation is transitive if you know if A bears a certain B bears the relation to B and B bears the relation to C, then A bears the relation to C. So set containment is like that. If A is a subset of B and B is a subset of C, then A is a subset of C. So other things that are like that are things like inequality. If A is less than, you know, if, if a number X is less than Y and Y is less than Z, then X is less than Z. Inequality satisfies the transitive relationship. <clears throat> um, OK, so uh, I mean, just to, to put this into words, this example, every, every raven is a bird, every bird is an animal, so every raven is an animal. So the set of ravens is a subset of the set of birds. The set of birds is a subset of the set of animals. So the set of ravens is a subset of the set of animals. <clears throat> now, um, if you take complements, that actually reverses the subset relationship. So if every A is a B, then every not B is a not A. Okay. If, if A is a subset of B, then B complement is a subset of A complement. <clears throat> So if every raven is a bird, then every non-bird is a non-raven. <clears throat> you can't be a raven without being a bird. So if you aren't a bird, you're not a raven. Does that make sense? It, it, it flips it around. All right. Uh, this is the negation of the subset relationship. It's the subset with a slash through it. A is not a subset of B means that there is some element of A that is not an element of B. And that is also reversed under set uh, under complements. So if A is not a subset of B, then B complement is not a subset of A complement. All right, somebody come up with an example other than the one that's written down here. Um, No, you talk. So you want to start with not every something is a something.
Sorry, not every something is a something else. Not every food is a hamburger, okay? So, <laughs> all right, so n not every, not every non-hamburger is a non-food, right? So if not, not every, not all foods are, not all food is hamburger. And so not all non-hamburger isn't food. There are some, there are some foods that are not hamburgers. So there are non, there are some not hamburgers that are foods, right? That's, that's the rhythm of it. <clears throat> okay. I uh, mentioned this before, but, you know, a is not the same thing as the set that contains A, right? These are two, there's, there's this great joke, what, what's the difference between zero and nothing? That's zero, that's nothing, right? I mean, it, <clears throat> a set is not the same as the elements that it contains. So A is an element of the set that contains A as an element, but A is not a subset of the set that contains A as an element. Okay? The, the set that contains A is a subset of the set con that contains A. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> this thing is a set with one element, A. All right, intersection uh, and union are the next two topics. Uh, I'm sure you've seen these before. The intersection of two sets is the set of things they have in common. You know, all the members that they have in common. So in particular, if we had this set 0, 1, 2, 3, and this set 1, 3, 5, what elements do they have in common? They share the elements 1 and 3. Their intersection is, is the set containing 1 and 3. <clears throat> in a Venn diagram, it's the overlap between the two sets. So if yellow is the set A and blue is the set B, the intersection is the green bit, A intersect B. If you take the intersection of the empty set and any other set, what you get is the empty set. What members do they have in common? None, right? The, because that's all that the empty set has in the first place. <clears throat> if you take the intersection of S and any other set, you get back that set, because all of its elements are already elements of S. When you take the intersection with S, you don't lose anything. Right? If we're talking about uh, the set of all foods, and A is the set of all hamburgers, then depending on what you think about people's cooking, um, you know, if you take the intersection of food and hamburger, it, you still get back hamburgers, right? Um, so. <clears throat> Not necessarily an edible hamburger, but a hamburger. Yeah. OK. Um, oops, I'm missing a, oh no, I'm not missing a bunch of this. OK, um, intersection is associative. So forget about these outer parentheses. They're just blocking off in a positive phrase here. But A intersect, B intersect, C is the same as A intersect, B intersect, C. And so there's no ambiguity in just writing A intersect, B intersect, C. Right. When we start mixing unions and intersections, that's not true. So it's true for intersections. It's also going to be true for unions, but it's not true for mixtures of them. There are rules for how you distribute um, intersection over, over union and union over intersection. <clears throat> All right, why does this have to be true? Well, this is, these are all the things, all the elements that are shared by B and C, and then these are those that are also shared by A. So these are things that are shared by A, B, and C. These are the things that are shared by A and B, but then we're insisting that they also be shared by C. So it's the same set of things. <clears throat> um, if things are shared by A and B, they're shared by A and B. They're shared by B and A. There's no, the, um, you, you can reverse the order. It doesn't change the, the elements that you get. It doesn't change the elements they have in common. OK, unions. Um, the union of two sets is the set of all things that are in either or both of the two sets. So in a Venn diagram, it's this. If this is A and this is B, then their union is anything that is in either A or B or both A and B. <clears throat> um, if I take the union of the empty set and some other set, it doesn't change it because I haven't, had any, I haven't added any elements since the, un the empty set doesn't have any elements in the first place. If I take the union of S and any other set, I just get back S because S already has everything in it. I'm not adding anything when I take the union <clears throat> of A with it. 
Uh, as I mentioned before, unions are associative and commutative. So A union B union C is the same as A union B union C, et cetera. These are all the things that are in any of these. Any, they're either in A or B or C or any combination of those. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, OK, something I forgot to say before about subsets is that if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A, then A and B are equal. Okay. If the set is a subset of another and vice versa, then they must have exactly the same elements. Every element of one is an element of the other. Uh, if A is a subset of B, then what happens when you take the union? Well, every element of A is already an element of B. So when I take the union, I haven't added anything to B that wasn't already there. I just get back B. Does this make sense to everybody? I'm going kind of quickly, but I'm assuming that this is mostly review. So far, so good? Slow me down. Good time to ask questions. <clears throat> OK. Um, I mentioned before, <clears throat> all right. The, what happens if I take the complement of an intersection? Um, the answer is I get the union of the complement. So let's just try to think this through. If we wanted to be really clever, we could click the footnote and get an example. <clears throat> um, all right, so let's give an example of that in words. What's a set A? Pick something. People who? People who take stat classes. OK. And B could be people who go on to get business degrees, for example. OK. So A intersect B are those people who take stat classes and go on to get business degrees. Okay, what's the complement of that? <clears throat> How do you end up not being in that set? <clears throat> so you can either you can you can you can be in the complement of the set either because you don't take a stat class or because you don't go on to get a business degree. So that's exactly this. These are people who don't take stat classes. These are people who don't get business degrees. OK, so either of those. And, it, and, and there's, there can be overlap between these two things, right? There can be people who, who don't take stat classes and don't go on to get business degrees. Or there can be people who do take stat classes but don't get business degrees. I don't know if there are any people who do get business degrees but don't take stat classes. But that's a separate issue. <clears throat> All right. So the complement of an intersection is the union of the complements. And what about this? People who either take stat classes or get business degrees, we want to take the complement of that. So that's got to be people who neither take stat classes nor get business degrees. It's an intersection of things. You have to both not take a stat class and not get a business degree. So that's this, the intersection of these two things. Didn't take a stat class and didn't get a business degree. So, the intersection can be pronounced and, right? It's a conjunction of conditions. Is there a question or just a head scratch? OK. <clears throat> Union can be pronounced or. Either of these has to hold. And it's not, a, it's not a, an exclusive or. It's, it's an inclusive or. Either this or that or both. <clears throat> OK. Mentioned before that while Intersection is associative and union is associative. They're not sort of associative across each other. So what happens if I take the intersection of A with the union of B and C? So we need C. What is C? Goes, does graduate work? Okay, so we've got <clears throat> took a stat class and either gets a business degree or does graduate work. Okay. So we want to. This is equivalent to, you have to either have 
taken a stat class and gotten a business degree, or taken a stat class and gone on to do graduate work, or both. Okay, <clears throat> So these are people who take stat classes and get business degrees. These are people who take stat classes and go on to do graduate work. This, this makes sense. So we've, we've written this A intersect a union as a union of two intersections. <clears throat> OK. Similarly, those people who take a stat class or both get a business degree and go on and do graduate work. And this is saying that that's, that's people who take a stat class or get a business degree and either take a stat class or go on to do graduate work. And they can do, they can do both? They can do both. Yeah. Sorry? The or always means this or this or both. It's things that are in either or both of these, these things. The, 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 uh, the union um, always, always means that. This means it has to be in both. All right, so does this sort of make sense? I mean, it, it, let's suppose that, I mean, if you want to prove this stuff mathematically, what you do is you say, OK, suppose that there's an element x in this set. Show that it must be in this set. Conversely, suppose there's an element y of this set. Show that it must be in this set. That, that's the way you prove that, that two sets are equal, that every element of one is an element of the other. Every element of the second is an element of the first. That's doing this, this sort of thing I said, if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A, then A and B are equal. That, that's the way you would prove this. So if we have an element of here, what do we know about it? Well, we know that either it is in A or it's in both of these. Well, if it's in A, then it's in A, so it's on both sides of this intersection. And so it must be over here. Right? Because, because both sides of this intersection include A, so this thing, so anything that's in A is on this side. Well, what if it isn't in A? What if it's in B intersect C? If it's in both B and C, then what happens on the right? It's got to be over here because it's in B. And it's got to be over here because it's in C. So it's got to be in both, so it's got to be in the intersection of these two things. That, that's the, the rhythm of how you prove these things. <clears throat> All right, now we're going to talk about some labels for relationships. Disjoint or mutually exclusive. So those are synonyms. Two sets are mutually exclusive if they don't have any elements in common. Now, another way of saying that is if their intersection is the empty set. If your intersection is the empty set, they don't have any elements in common. So. Uh, that's another way of writing that two sets are disjoint. The intersection is empty. <clears throat> Here's a Venn diagram for what that looks like. They don't overlap. They don't have any elements in common. Talk about a collection of sets being disjoint if every pair of sets in that collection is disjoint. So uh, one way of writing an intersection is with this, ups this uh, cap, if you like. But you've also, if you just write two sets down next to each other, it's, a, it's an equivalent way of expressing this. This means AI intersect AJ. And so this collection, A1, A2, A3, et cetera, is disjoint if for every pair AI and AJ, the intersection of AI and J is empty unless I and J are equal. So the intersection of any set with itself is just giving back that original set, which might or might not be empty. But when you take an intersection of any pair, any, any distinct pair of these, you get the empty set. <clears throat> so uh, for instance, oh, I, didn't, I, changed, I fixed the typos this morning, but didn't upload the file yet. There should be commas here. Um, so here's a list of four sets. So this is A1, A2, A3, and A4. This collection of sets is disjoint. Because if I look, does any other, if this set has the elements 1, 2, and 3. Are those elements in any of these other sets? No. So if I take the intersection of this one with any of the others, I get the empty set. Well, this one has the elements 0 and 4. Are those elements shared by any other set? 
So if I take the intersection of A2 and any of the others, I get the empty set. Similarly, the intersection of A3 and any of the others is empty. The intersection of A4 and any of the others is empty. So this is a disjoint collection of sets. <clears throat> All right. Uh, the empty set and any other set are mutually exclusive or disjoint because when you take their intersection, you get back the empty set. <clears throat> now, when we were talking about counting, one of our strategies for counting was to take a big collection of things and subdivide it into non-overlapping groups in such a way that every element of the original set was in exactly one of those groups. Okay? We're going to get at a more mathematical set of terms to describe that situation. It's going to end up being useful for finding probabilities of complicated events as well. Um, so the first notion is that of uh, a collection being exhaustive. Um, or, uh, and then from that, we're going to talk about partitions. So a collection of sets exhausts another set if every element of, the, of, of that second set is in at least one of the other sets. So for example, uh, the set of even numbers and the set of odd numbers exhausts the set of integers. Okay, together, every integer is in at least one of those other sets. In fact, it's in exactly one of those other sets. <clears throat> um, all right. Uh, to be exhaustive, the things don't need to be disjoint. You could have, you could have uh, um, for example, I think I, I think I give this example there. Yeah, so these sets, one, two, three, 1, 4, 3, 5, and minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, exhaust that set. It exhausts 2, 3, 4, 5. Those sets are not disjoint. 1, 2, 3 has an intersection with this. It also has an intersection with this, non-empty intersection with that. Right? So the element 1 appears in more than one of those sets. The element 2 appears in more than one of those sets. But every element of this set appears in at least one of those collection, one member of those, that collection. Yes? Uh, S isn't any of these. S might be the set of integers or something like that in this case. So what we're saying here is that this is A, and this could be A1, A2, A2, A3, A4. And so every element of A is in at least one of the other sets, A1, 2, 3, or 4. Okay, So we've, cut, we've exhausted, you know, that, that, that together, if you go through all of the elements of A1, 2, 3, 4, et cetera, you have found all of the elements of the set A, and then some. And you might have found some of them more than once, but it exhausts it. <clears throat> Partition is uh, closer to what we were talking about for that strategy for counting. The idea of a partition is that every element of the set A occurs in exactly one of the other things. There's a question? Yeah. yeah I was uh, wondering about the negative. Yeah. How does that exhaust the other set? Because they're negative. OK, what, what it, what's involved in exhausting the set is this collection. So I, I, I should probably, I'm going to, let me just write this down. So we have A1. <laughs> I is equal to 1, 2, 3. A2 is equal to 1, 4. A3 is equal to 5. Oh, sorry, 3, 5. Uh, can you see that through here? Or is this uh, is electron in the way? Um, A4 is equal to minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. And A is equal to 2, 3, 4, 5. Is that for any specific reason that that's what A is? Well, it's just what I, right yeah, that, that, that's what, yeah. I'm, so the, the, the assertion is that these four sets exhaust this set. What that means is that every element of this set is in at least one of those. Yeah, that all of the implicit in this is that there is some universe S. 
um, which might, for the sake of argument, be the positive and negative integers. Okay, so all the integers. <clears throat> so is the first element in, one of the, in at least one of these sets? Yes, it's in this one. Okay, what about the second element, three? That's in this one and in this one. Four, that's in this one. Five, that's in this one. So every element of this is in at least one of those. This one isn't helping, okay, but, but this collection still exhausts the set A. Oh, so you can have other ones too. So they, they, they just, they don't help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there a way to show the Venn diagram of that, or is that not helping? Sure. Um, what it's basically saying is that A is a subset of A1, union A2, union A3, union A4. So a Venn diagram for this might look something like the following, um, here's A, here's A1, here's A2, A2 has an intersection with that, so we should draw it that way. A3 intersects the first but not the second, so we could draw a three like this. Oops, I gotta draw it so that it includes the rest of a three, and then a four is over here somewhere. Okay, so a four doesn't share any elements with the set A. It in fact doesn't share any elements with the sets A one, two, or three either, right? <clears throat> but a is contained in the union of A1 through A4. All of these numbers have to be exhausted. Everything in A has to be in at least one of the other guys. Yeah. OK, um, so partition is saying that uh, every element of the set A is in exactly one of the others. And there's nothing else. That, they don't, that together they don't include anything that isn't in A. So basically what that's saying is that if you're carving up the set A, so again, if here's S and here's some set A, then to partition A is basically to just divide it into some pieces so that this might be A1, a2, A3, A4, A5. So that these pieces are, are disjoint. They don't have any elements in common. And their union is all of A. So uh, a different way to write that would be A is equal to the union over j of aj. So that's like a1, union a2, union a3, etc. And a, i, a, j is empty for i not equal to j. Yeah? So how do you know Well, it's hard to draw this, but I, I was intending for this not to be overlapped with, but be a separate piece. So I mean, maybe I should draw it this way. Is that easier? OK. I mean, the uh, <laughs> question was, how do I know A5 isn't part of A4? I, I, there isn't a good way to represent it graphically. But the idea was that, that they, they don't share any elements in common. Yeah. <clears throat> OK, so uh, What's OK, so the difference between a collection exhausting some other set and a collection being a partition of some other set has to do with whether those sets can overlap and whether they contain anything that isn't in that set, that you're, that, the, the, the second set. This, um, so um, the set of integers can be is exhausted by the set of integers that are divisible by, um, that are either prime or are divisible by 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you know, et cetera, right? So they're, either, they're either prime or they're divisible by two or they're divisible by three or they're divisible, et cetera. But many numbers are getting, are occurring more and more than one of those sets, right? That, that the numbers that are divisible by four are also divisible by two, right? So that's, that exhausts the set of integers but it's not a partition of the set of integers because you're getting some numbers many, many, many times once in each of, in each of these, you know, in a bunch of these subsets. Okay, a partition is saying that everything occurs in exactly one of those subsets, and there's nothing else. You haven't included anything that isn't in the set A when you take the union. All right, let's. Look at these properties. So this is just to summarize what we just did. Uh, if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of C, then A is a subset of C. Taking complements reverses set inclusion. So if A is a subset of B, then B complement is a subset of A complement. If every A is a B, then every non-B is a non-A. <clears throat> um, if I take the intersection of two things, what I get is going to be a subset of either of them, right? When I take the intersection, at, at best, I'm not losing anything because every element of A is already an element of B. But if not every element of A is an element of B, then I've thrown something away by taking the intersection. I've lost something. And so what I end up with can't be any bigger than what I started with. Right? That's what this is saying. Right? <clears throat> um, in fact, I only end up with what I started with if A was already a subset of B. So if every element of A was already a subset of B, then when I take the intersection, I haven't lost anything, any elements of A. All right. Uh, similarly, unions are including more stuff. So when I include the stuff that's in B as well as the stuff that's in A, I still have all the stuff that's in A. I can only have gained things. So A is a subset of A union B. <clears throat> um, these rules for taking complements of unions and intersections, um, uh, the complement, you know, if something isn't in both A and B, either it isn't in A or it isn't in B. If something isn't in either A or B, then it isn't in A and it isn't in B. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Uh, A union B is the same as B union A. It's the stuff that's in both. Sorry, it's the stuff that's in either. Um, then we have these uh, associative rules. If it's in A and B and C, then it's an A and B and C. If it's an A or B or C, then it's an A or B or C. If it's an A and B or C, then either it's an A and B or it's an A and C or both. If it's an A or B and C, it's either in it's in both A or B, and it's in A or C. OK. So we're going to do some examples. Why don't we take a two-minute break, and then we'll, we'll do some examples. This is getting closer to the homework. Sure.
Yes. Yep. The, these these symbols are arbitrary, so th this is also true. If it's in both A and B, it's in B. If it's in both A and B, it's in A. Yep. No, it, it said that um, basically nobody has proved they exist, therefore they don't exist. We can look at the specific answers to that one, um, but I think that, yeah, that, yeah. Okay, let's, uh, let's start again. Um, all right, so uh, this is an odd collection of things. Dog, Fred, Albatross, income tax, and cancer is the set A. And the set B is cancer, income tax, Albatross, Fred, and dog. Um, what's the difference between those two sets? Is dog in both of them? Is Fred in both of them? Yeah. Albatross, income tax, cancer, left anything out? No. Those are the same set, right? A and B are one in the same set. Okay, the, the, R, the elements are listed in a different order, but order doesn't matter because we're talking about collections, sets. OK, so uh, which of these things is true? It, it, is A not equal to B? No. OK, that's false. Is A union A equal to A? That's always true. The union of a set in itself is always the original set. You're taking all the things that are either in A or in A or both. right? That's just the things that are in A. So that's, that's got to be true. Is A complement a subset of B complement? A complement is, in fact, equal to B complement. Right? So it's certainly a subset. Um, is A equal to A? Yeah, we like that. Is A, whoops, A union B equal to A? Yeah, because that's really the same as A union A. Is A a subset of B? Yep, every set is a subset of itself. A intersect B, is that equal to B? Yep, because A intersect, I'm sorry, that's A union or A intersect? A intersect. Okay. Um, A intersect A is A. It's always true that the intersection of a set in itself is the original set. A complement is equal to B complement. I don't know, my vision isn't good enough. Um, J, J is not a no, but the, the one above is equal. OK. Uh, J is not a subset. So that's false, right? Because in fact, A is a subset of B. Is A complement a subset of A complement? Yeah. Every set is a, is a subset of itself. OK, this one is false because it is, in fact, a subset. A is always a subset of itself. 
A equals B? Yeah. Yep. B is a subset of A? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So this should be right. Yes? We hope. All right. Why is not um, L again? L? Uh, so the, I don't know if you, can, if you can see that, but there's a slash through the, the subset sign that's saying A complement is not a subset of B complement. Is, can you, is that, is it, you can see that, okay, yeah, it's, it's hard on the, the screen. Um, okay, which of these are always true? A union B is a subset of B. Right, okay, when I, when I take B and then I include in addition to B all the things that are in A, what I end up with might not all be in B, because there might be some elements of A that are not in B, in which case A union B has stuff that isn't in B. Right? So that's not necessarily true. All right. If A union B equals C, and A intersect C is empty, then A is empty. OK, everything that's in C is either in A or B or both, right? So what part of C came from A? Let's put it this way. If, if, A, if C is equal to A union B, then What's the relationship of A to C? It's a subset, right? So if I take the intersection of a subset with something that, that it is a subset of, what do I get back? Same thing. So A intersect C is A, right? So this is saying, this is saying that A is empty, therefore A is empty. Does that make sense? No? Not yet. OK. The problem is that when I zoom in, it, um, it, it runs off the, the edge of the, um, it, you don't get to see the whole answer. Uh, it's a, a limitation of the browser. Um, um, If I hit control, hmm, I'm not sure how to do that. You want to, sh you want to sh come show me on my yeah. screen? Yeah. Let me uh, squeeze this back a little bit. Ah, OK, great. Kind of awesome. Thing. Terrific. So you just hold it down and then, yeah. and then go up or down. Excellent. OK. Ooh -hoo. Thank you. New tricks. OK. All right, so we're looking at B, the uh, item B, and what's going on? Well, I've got that C is equal to A union B, OK? So it follows from that that A is a subset of C, right? Everything that is, in, that is in A is in C. Also, everything that is in B is in C, OK? So if A is a subset of C, then what do I know? I know that A intersect C is equal to A. And so picture for this. A, B, and C is all of this. C is A union B. Yep. OK. So I know that A is itself a subset of that. So if I take A, intersect that, I just get back A. Yep. So 
C is the union of A and B. So C is all those things that are either in A or B or both. What it, this is saying it isn't. This is saying that, that everything that it, that what does C consist of? It consists of all those things that are either in A or in B or both. That's, this, is, this, is, this is defining C to be that. Okay, so, um, it, it, you know, if, if A were the numbers 0, 1, 2, and B were the numbers 2, 3, 4, then C would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's all the things that are in either or both. Okay, But now, when I take the union of those things, so I, I know that every element of A is in here, because this is a union. It's, it's got every element of A in it. So if I, if I take the intersection of A, remember, if, 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 I, have, if I have a situation where um, Q is a subset of R, if then Q intersect R, write it that way, is Q. Right? If, if every element of Q is an element of R, then when I take the intersection, I haven't taken anything away from Q. I just get Q back. Okay? So here, I know that every element of A is an element of C, because C was defined to contain everything that's in A and other stuff. So if I take the intersection of A and C, I've got to get back A. But this says that when I take the intersection of A and C, I get back nothing. Okay, so that means nothing is A. So A must be empty. So far, so good. Yes. The question was, does that mean C is equal to B? And the answer is yes. And it could be that B is empty also. It could be that C is empty. <clears throat> but that that's certainly true. OK, if A is a subset of B, then A union B is equal to B. Is that always true? I'm saying everything that's in A is in B. So everything that's in A or B already includes the stuff that's in A. So we haven't changed anything. Yes? So how can the intersection of the OK, so subsets can be empty. So I, I can, uh, the, the question was, how does it make sense for the intersection with a subset to be empty? And it, it, it basically, uh, the scenario you know, here would be, this is, A is the empty set. B equals that. Then C is equal to A, and B is equal to 2, 3, 4. This is still true. This is equal to A, and that is equal to, in fact, the empty set. Drawn more elegantly by somebody with better penmanship than I have. I got C's in handwriting as a kid. It worked out better. <clears throat> I'm sorry for you guys. <laughs> I try. <laughs> OK. Does that solve your problem? The empty set is a subset of every set. OK, you're willing to. All right. Uh, OK, uh, so we agreed on this one. If A is a subset of B, then A union B equals A. Is that true? No. OK, A is a subset of B, then everything that's in A is already included in here, but there could be stuff that's in B but not in A. So that's not true. If A intersect B is empty, another way of saying that is, is, is if A and B are mutually exclusive or if A and B are disjoint, and if B and C are mutually exclusive, then A and C are mutually exclusive. OK, here, here, we, can, we can come up with a pretty simple counterexample of that, to that, right? Let's let A is the set 
1, B is the set 0, C is the set 1. Right? These have no elements in common. These have no elements in common. These are, in fact, the same set. Okay. <clears throat> so that's not true. Uh, a is a subset of A intersect B. No. It's the other way around, right? A intersect B is a subset of A. When you, when you take A intersect B, you can lose stuff that was in A because, it ha because it's only the things that are in both A and B. Okay? So A is potentially larger, has potentially more elements. Okay, A is a subset of A union B. Right? Yeah. That's, that's going to be true <clears throat> because the right-hand side is, includes everything that's in A and possibly more if B has stuff that isn't in A. <clears throat> Um, A intersect B is a subset of A. Yes, OK, because when we take A intersect B, we have only things that are in A, but perhaps not all of them, because we only get those things that are in A that are also in B. So what we, are, what we end up left over with is certainly in A. <clears throat> if A union B equals A, then B is a subset of A. So if when we take everything that's in A and add to it, include with it everything that's in B, and by doing that, we haven't gotten anything more than we had in the first place, then it must be the case that every element of B was already an element of A. Right? So this one's true. OK, if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of C, then A is a subset of C. So if every element of A is an element of B, and everything in B is in C, then everything in A is in C. This is the transitivity property. So this is true as well. Um, somewhere over here, this better give me a green check off screen. <laughs> Control. <laughs> Woohoo. All right. OK, now where it's going to get really fun. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Oops, Control, Zoom. OK, uh, S is spherical objects. B is ping pong balls. Oops. C is basketballs. No, A is a set of, uh, S is spherical objects. A is balls. B is ping pong balls. C is basketballs. OK, and we're pretending that basketballs are perfect spheres for the sake of argument. Ich. All right, is the set, uh, so the, 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 here, I mean, just, uh, it's probably pretty obvious. This means B complement. That, that's a subset mark, but this is supposed to be, if I can make it a superscript, I would, but you can't do that in HTML um, in, in the body of a, of a multiple selection thing. So th this is B complement. So this is saying A uh, complement is a subset of B complement. That's what, what that is. So let's look at the first one. Is B a subset of C complement? So is our, are the set of all ping pong balls a subset of the things that are not basketballs? They're, they're spherical objects that are they're spherical objects that are not basketballs or ping pong balls or balls, right? And this is saying, um, this is basically saying, are there any basketballs that are ping pong balls? No. No. Okay. The 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 all every ping pong ball is a non basketball. Yeah. Right. That's another way of saying this. Yes. Okay. So that's true. Okay. So if that's true, the next one's got to be false, right? That's easy enough. <clears throat> um, OK, so C is, say, is asking, um, if I look at the things that are either balls or ping pong balls, are they all ping pong balls? No. no. OK. 
Um, if I look at things that are either that are both balls and ping pong balls, are they balls? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because we, for the sake of argument, you know, in this example, every ping pong ball is a ball, right? Uh, are ping pong balls a subset of the set of balls? Yeah. Every ping pong ball is a ball. So that's this one. Is every ping pong ball a basketball? No. no. Um, are there ping pong balls that are not balls? That's what G's asking, right? People getting this translation of symbols to words, because that's really what this is about, right? The, the logic isn't hard. It's the translation that's hard. Yeah. Yes? Isn't D equal to B? A intersecting B and that equal to B? Yes. D, uh, the, so D, what in fact is true is that A intersect B is B. Oh, I'm sorry. D, so D, D is so wrong. Yeah. So I, I did I? I did, Inter so this is false. It should be D. Why is it that's false. I, didn't, I think I read it as union rather than intersection. Yeah. It, that, that would be true if. So, what is A intersect B? It's the set of all balls that are ping pong balls. That is, it's the set of all ping pong balls. There are balls that are not ping pong balls. So, A intersect B is not the set of all balls. It's the set of all ping pong balls. It's a smaller set. Right? So yeah, thank you. But, but in D, uh, there's the circles, and there's circles with names. I think it's what shares there's those two is the circles. No? What shares both A and B, they're, they're both balls. No? Right. The, uh, intersect means it has to be both. OK, so for something to be both a ball and a ping pong ball, it has to be a ping pong ball. It can't be a basketball, for example. So A intersect B doesn't include basketballs. A includes basketballs. A intersect B does not include basketballs. Does but A intersect B cannot be ping balls. A intersect B is, is ping pong balls. It's exactly the set of ping pong balls. But not all of them. Right. Oh. No, the, the, the relationship we have is here's, here's the set of all spherical objects. Okay. Here's the set of all balls. This is A. Here's the set of all ping pong balls. Here's the set of all basketballs. Every basketball is a ball. Every basketball is a sphere. Every ball is a sphere. Every ping pong ball is a ball. Every ping pong ball is a sphere. But not everything that is a ping pong ball. No, every ping pong ball is a sphere, but not every but is a ball. But not every ball is a ping pong ball. Right. right. That that's that's what's going on in D. Does that make sense? Okay. <laughs> but uh, A. Part of, I forgot the term, the, the one. D? We're look yeah, I'm talking about D. D, OK. Would it be true if it was an element of A, right? A. Uh, no, uh, it's, it's a subset. You mean a subset? So yeah, I mean a, a subset. Yeah, yeah. A, a intersect B is a subset of A. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, that's true. But so basically, what's going on is when you take A intersect B, you have lost something from A. Right, you're only you, you. All you have left are the ping pong balls. You have excluded the other balls, so you don't get back A. You get back only part of A, that part that is that, that those elements of A that are ping pong balls. <clears throat> okay, uh, B is not a subset of C. Right, F is false. Is B is a subset of A, so G is false. B intersect C is empty, right? You, you don't play ping pong with basketballs. Yep. OK. Uh, OK, so that's H. Is every ball a ping pong ball? 
No, okay, so I is false. Um, now we've got, are those, thing, are those balls that are ping pong balls, ping pong balls and nothing else? Yes, okay, so J is true. Okay, A complement, not a subset of B complement. Okay, what is this saying? This is saying A complement is the set of non-balls. B complement is the set of non-ping pong balls. Oh, wait, we've got it inside out. Yes, that's exactly why. This is interesting. Um, OK, which is a bigger set, A complement or B complement? B complement is bigger. So the, if you take a smaller set and take its complement, if, you, if, you have, if, if B is a subset of A, then A complement is a subset of B complement. Right? That taking complements reverses the subset inclusion. Okay. So in this case, B is a subset of A, right? Ping pong balls are only some of the balls that, it, that there are, okay? So B complement contains A complement. A complement is a subset of B complement. Every non-ball is a non-ping pong ball, right? Sorry? If you're, not, if you're not a ball, you're not a ping pong ball. OK. So in fact, this should be subset, not not subset. So this is false, because it has the slash to it. Oh, it's false. Yep. OK. Is C a subset of A? Yes. Basketballs or balls? Uh, if you take the balls and add to them the ping pong balls, you end up with the balls. right? <clears throat> so this is true. Um, is every spherical object either a ping pong ball or a basketball? No. OK, so n is false. Is every basketball a non-ping pong ball? Yes. OK, so looking at the picture, what is this saying? So we're, we're looking at, at O. B complement is everything out here that includes C. Right? Can you go over N one more time? I'm confused. Sure. N? M. M. A union B is, is A. Okay, so a, 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 so we're looking at M. A is the set of all balls. B is the set of all ping pong balls. So A is this, B is this. Every element of B is already in A. So when I take their union, I haven't expanded it at all. I've just, I've just got what I, I still have all. Every ping pong ball is already a ball. So I haven't added anything extra to the set of balls. Like, can, can you say what O means in words? I'm confused. Like, uh, this is asking, is every basketball a non-ping pong ball? Okay. okay. And in fact, yes. There are no basketballs that are ping pong balls. OK. okay. <clears throat> All right. Getting in over my head here talking about sports. You know, it's just something. <laughs> um, P, OK. Is everything, every non ball a non ping pong ball? Yes. yes. OK, that's true, right? Because every ping pong ball is a ball, so every non ping pong ball. Every non-ball is a non-ping pong ball. Uh, right, that was what we were just doing? OK. Not every ball is a basketball, so Q is false. Um, not every ball is a ping pong ball, so R is true, right? Not every ball is a basketball, so S is false.
Every basketball is a non-ping pong ball. There are no basketballs that are not non-ping pong balls. So T is false. <laughs> T is saying, saying that there are basketballs that are ping pong balls. Yes? So I got this backwards? that are not, not ping pong balls. So it's saying there are basketballs that are ping pong balls. Right? <clears throat> OK. Then uh, if I take ping pong balls and basketballs, have I got anything that isn't a ball? No. So this is true. Everything that's either a ping pong ball or a basketball is a ball. So u is true. V. Uh, v is saying that n not every ball is a basketball. That's true, right? This is saying every ball is either a ping pong ball or a basketball. No. That's false, right? And this is saying that there are ping pong balls that are not basketballs. <coughs> so that should be true. <laughs> All right, want to run back through these once more before we press check answer? <laughs> no. <laughs> Enough's enough. Okay. Uh, <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. All right. There's more. Well, I, I mean, does it help to think through this as a group? Yeah. yeah. Yes? OK, so let, let's, let's do it. Um, you know what it's like to code this stuff up. That's <laughs> OK, uh, so E is the set of integers. F is a set of even integers. G is a set of odd integers. Do the sets F and G exhaust the set E? So if I look at the even integers and the odd integers, is every integer either even or odd? Yes, OK, so that should be true. Whoops, except that I should click true if I say true. <clears throat> OK, uh, F and G are disjoint. Are there any numbers that are both even and odd? No. OK, so then uh, do the sets F and G partition the set E? So every integer is, is either an even integer or an odd integer. It cannot be both. And there are no numbers. There are there are there are no numbers besides integers that are either even integers or odd integers. Right? We haven't included anything beyond the set of integers. So this is true. Okay. All right. Now we'll blow this up again with the, my the cool new trick that I've been taught. All right. Except I need to go sideways a little bit first. Um, how much can I blow this up without? running off the screen. OK, so now this is taking these set relations and expressing them in words instead of in symbols. And again, it's, a lot of this stuff is just about going back and forth between words and symbols. And that's, that's where it gets hard. So if every A is a B, what is that in symbols? A is a subset of B. OK, what is that as a Venn diagram? Right? That's what we're looking at. OK. That every non-A is a non-B. Are there non-As that are Bs? Yeah, there's one. Right? OK. <clears throat> so A is false. So if x is in A and x is in both B and C, sorry, is in either B or C, then either x is in A and B, or x is in A and C. Huh? No. Um, 
All right. So what 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 are we saying in, in symbols? It's x is in a intersect b union c, right? Okay. And what's going on on the right hand side is we're saying. Does it follow that x is in A intersect B or A intersect C? Okay. And, and, and it does, right? That's exactly how intersection distributes over a union. Picture? <laughs> OK. Um, so here is A, B, and I might as well make C here, C. And we're, we're being told that X is in A intersect B union C. So what should I be shading? Yes? OK, so, so I'm in there. If I'm in there, then am I, I'm either in A intersect B. What's A intersect B? That's this. Or I'm in A intersect C. That's this. Okay. I could be in both. But I'm in at least one of those two things. Okay. So we've got B is true. <clears throat> All right. Uh, C, if X isn't in A or B, that it isn't in A and it isn't in B. Yes? If x isn't in both A and B, then x isn't in A and x isn't in B. No. It could fail to be in A and B just because it isn't in A, or just because it isn't in B. It doesn't have to fail to be in both. If x is in both A and B, or x is in both A and C, then x must be in A. Oops, except that I have to click the right one. OK, if x isn't in A or x isn't in B, then x isn't in A or B. OK, this is false. <clears throat> If x isn't in A and x isn't in B, then it's not in A union B. If it, x, if it isn't in A or it isn't in B, then it isn't in A intersect B. OK? But for example, x might, let's say x isn't in A, but x is in B. Then the first part's satisfied, but the last part isn't, because it is in A union B. OK. Um, so we're going to run out of time momentarily. Uh, if x is in A intersect B or x is in A intersect C, then x is in B intersect C. Mm, I, I, I don't see why it should be. <clears throat> if every A is a B, every non-B is a non-A. Yep, that's, that's true. That's just the reversal of set inclusion when under complements. If x is in A or x is in both, is in either B or C, then x is in A union B and x is in A union C. No, if this were an or, that would be true. 
if x is not in both A and B, then either x is not in A or x is not in B. That's true. If x is in A or x is in both B and C, then x is in either A or B and x is in either A or C. Okay, let's suppose that it's in A. Then it's in both sides here. Suppose that it isn't in A, but it's in both B and C. Then it's in this side because it's in B, and it's in this side because it's in C. Yes? Okay, so that would be true. Okay, see you guys next time.